Welcome. My name is Michael Joswig and uh, I'm one of the authors of the software system Polymake, which is for polyhedral computations, and this is what I would like to present today. So this is free software, it can be downloaded, and this presentation is based on the Jupyter Notebook, which you can download from my webpage, and so this means everything that you see now, you can do on your own at home. All right, so let's get started. Uh, what is this software about? Um, convex polytopes play the central role. And let's start out with a standard example which is familiar from optimization. So this function call here so defines a fractional network polytope which is given in terms of uh, non-negativity constraints and one non-trivial linear inequality. And this linear inequality is encoded in this vector. It has a constant term and three coefficients, so it's a three-dimensional knapsack polytope. And let me translate what this vector is, uh, uh, what is this vector encodes. So in term this is the linear inequality 40 minus 2 times x minus 3 times y minus 5z greater or equal to 0. That is, we are computing with inward-pointing normal vectors. So if you wish, you can translate this into a more standard form of a knapsack uh, equation like here. So that's 2 times x plus 3y plus 5z is less than or equal to 40. And by the way, so you will notice this uh, funny dollar sign in front of this variable. So the language that we're interacting with um, with Polymake is, is Perl. And uh, so this refers to a scalar variable. And just because we have uh, these uh, objects that you see belong to an object hierarchy. And uh, so this is like a, a pointer to an object. And, but I won't go in so much into the technical details for today. All right. So, fractional knapsack polytope, how does polymag work? Well, so um, objects are defined in terms of properties. And uh, so uh, let's see what kind of properties we currently have. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, so this uh, knapsack polytope now uh, has three properties. So the most important ones are these inequalities. So here you see the non-negativity constraints, three non-negativity constraints, this one special uh, linear inequality that I showed to you. And well, there's an artificial linear inequality, which is important because we are also working with unbounded polyhedra. We're using a homogenized coordinate model. Uh, it just happens to be there and um, it is useful for technical purposes. But also, so in this particular case, Polymic already checked, so this is a bounded polytope. It's, uh, so it's actually a polytope, not an unbounded polyhedron. And uh, so we're using four homogeneous coordinates, and these correspond to these four columns of this matrix. And uh, yes, so this is what Polymic knows about. So what can you do with this thing now? So one of the standard things that Polymic is good at is computing convex hulls or dual convex hull, so doing the conversion of the polytope from an inequality description to a vertex description. So it's an interesting topic in its own, so what are methods to do this? And Polymake has uh, implementations of various convex hull codes on its own, but it also interfaces to many standard things. So the important uh, thing is it is worth experimenting with several. It's, a, it's complicated to define, uh, to, to decide which algorithms work best on particular input. Here it is, it's a small example, it's easy. So we can compute these vertices. As you know, these knapsack polytopes, the fractional knapsack polytopes, uh, are simplices. So they are boring in four, uh, in three dimensions. They have four vertices. These are these vertices, and because we work in this homogeneous, homogeneous coordinate model, so we always have this uh, prepending one. So the first column is always one for these vertices. All right, four vertices in three space. And uh, so you see the information that we gathered about the polytope um, uh, was uh, changed. So there's, uh, there's more information now. Uh, so due to lack of space, you cannot see that the vertices are, li uh, are listed here below. Uh, but trust me, they are there. But so we also know it is, uh, it is feasible. So it has a point. So this is certified, for instance, by the existence of a vertex. All right, so this is uh, trivial computations that you can do uh, with polytopes. 
And um, so what else can you do? Of course, we, this is about, this workshop is about optimization. The easiest task in optimization is to solve linear programs. Let's solve a linear program. So this is how to define a linear program. So because Polymake thinks of things in uh, geometric terms, polytopes come first and linear programs come second. So that is, a linear program is something that you attach upon the polytope, so the feasible region is more important to us than the linear program in itself. And so here you have this um, fractional knapsack polytope, and here you define a linear program by giving it a linear objective function. and. Uh, so, and this is this linear program, and afterwards you can, for instance, ask for the maximal vertex, so optimal solution, so A, uh, N optimal solution, and the um, uh, maximal value, and so, so everything is computed in exact rational coordinates. All right. So, um, what else? Well, so um, these knapsack polytopes are interesting, of course, because they come with interesting integer linear programs. How would you do this in Polymake? Well, so I said, so we had take a very geometric point of view, so there is no uh, branch and bound algorithm implemented, although there is, check out our webpage, www.polymake.org. So there is a number of tutorials also from optimization, in particular there is one uh, which, ex which gives you a proof of concept uh, implementation of branch and bound. Um, that's very interesting, check it out. But here, um, the more natural thing to do for us is to explicitly construct all integer points and uh, define an integer linear program as a linear program over the integer hull. All right, and so here's what you do. So you compute the integer hull, so that's a standard function. For instance, you could look at the vertices, it, it just defines another polytope. Here, so you, from this you can already see that the integer hull is more complicated, more interesting, uh, than the original polyterp itself. It's a boring simplex and this is or has already too many vertices to be a simplex and uh, so that's a more rich uh, geometric structure. Now the integer linear program becomes a linear program. Again you equip it with a linear objective function. Let's take the same as before. Look at an optimal solution and uh, which is unique in this case and the, uh, the optimal value. The optimal value is 26, that's the integer optimal value, and uh, so the fractional optimal value was 80 over 3. Uh, 26 times 3 is 78, so the integer optimal value is strictly smaller than the uh, fractional uh, value, and this is uh, why knapsack polytopes are interesting. Okay, so a very small example, and uh, that is, um, so if I would stop with this presentation here, then you would go home and tell your friends, well, Polymake is a program which can work with uh, linear programs and integer linear programs, but barely. It can only work with um, things which are so small that I prefer to solve them by pencil and paper. Well, wait, there's more interesting things to come. Okay, so for instance, uh, you can visualize a number of things, and uh, this is something that you cannot do with CPLEX. Um, and uh, for instance, you can uh, visualize uh, our fractional lattice polytope, uh, our fractional uh, knapsack polytope, and how the integer lattice sits inside with beautiful color encoding. And uh, so you can have SVG output, uh, scalable vector. Uh, graphics output in the Jupyter Notebook and uh, so for technical reasons uh, so you cannot see this here so therefore this is kind of homework for you try this out look at it and if you omit the SVG here you even get an interactive visualization that you can rotate and zoom and scale and whatnot all right so that's you can explore uh, the objects that you work with interactively and uh, and uh, visually okay so what else? Well, so there is uh, a number of things that you can do. Um, Polymake historically started uh, as a project on convex polytops, but in the meantime, uh, there are uh, numerous other things that Polymake can do. And I give you just a very, very, very short glimpse. Let me first pick an example which is further away from optimization and then, then I will return back to optimization questions. So 
There is a, so everything in Polymix is organized into applications. Think of uh, an application as a namespace. And the various applications are grouped to various uh, areas of mathematics. So Topaz is short for um, topology application zoo. So this is about uh, combinatorial topology. And for instance, this is how you can produce a real project of plane, a triangulation of the, of the real project of plane. Uh, this particular case, it's a famous combinatorial example. It's uh, with um, six vertices. And you can compute the integer homology. Without going into the details, it just tells you, well, the reduced integer homology um, is trivial, except for um, uh, the situation in dimension 1, where you have uh, torsion, uh, two torsion of rank 1. All right. And all other homology is trivial. So this is what these zeros and these empty braces here. Signal. All right, so you can figure it out. Uh, so there's lots of documentation on our web page, uh, what this actually means, why this is interesting, and so on and so forth. There are many, many other things. So let me go back to into the optimization direction very slowly. So there is a topic which is very dear to my heart. This is tropical geometry. So one way of thinking of tropical geometry is it's a, it's a nice breed between optimization and algebraic geometry um, and uh, so to the benefit of both areas. So um, for optimization people this is interesting in two ways because algebraic geometry sometimes tells you um, something interesting about um, objects or problems and optimization that have been studied before but also it works the other way around so algorithms and optimization are sometimes useful to solve interesting problems in algebraic geometry all right I'm not giving a talk on tropical geometry just let me show you a few interesting computations so that's, uh, or if you never saw this before, so here's, a, uh, here's the first sketch. So you can say tropical geometry is also, it's a way of doing um, linear algebra and algebraic geometry over the CMA ring of tropical numbers, uh, which has the minimum and um, as an addition and the multiplication as a product. And so here you can define two numbers, x and y. So this is just a, so polymake is strongly typed, so therefore we like to distinguish the rational number 3 from the tropical number 3. And uh, so we like to distinguish the uh, rational number 5 from the uh, tropical number 5. So because now we can use operator overlaying and uh, looking at the sum in the tropical sense, which is the minimum, and at the product, which is the sum. Okay. Not very exciting, but still useful. So what can you do with this? So you can do the same with matrices. You can define a matrix with tropical numbers as their coefficients. That's a definition of a matrix row-wise. So it's a three by three matrix, three rows and uh, three columns. And for instance, so you can also work with a neutral element, which is infinity, that is spelled out like this here. And uh, so why should people in optimization care about this? Well, um, you could think of the matrix M as a weight matrix of a directed graph, in that particular example, on three nodes. And then if you compute um, um, the tropical sum of the two matrices, first matrix is M, and the second one is the product of M with itself, and uh, just because this is a matrix of three no, uh, shortest path, uh, sorry, this is a directed graph on three nodes. Any shortest path uh, goes over uh, at most two edges uh, and therefore the Bellman-Ford method um, would compute um, um, this um, uh, uh, the shortest path or the all shortest path problem in two steps and this can be translated into tropical arithmetic exactly in this form. So therefore, this output here is the result of a shortest path matrix uh, for this particular graph. Of course, it works with larger graphs as well. So um, now that we are talking about graph algorithms, can Polymake do more interesting graph algorithms? Of course. And again, just because this is interesting from an uh, also geometric point of view, so you can compute the tropical determinant of this matrix. So this is T dead here. And as it turns out, so the tropical determinant is exactly uh, the same as uh, solving um, 
a linear assignment problem uh, and then uh, so it's a minimum weight bipartite uh, matching problem on this graph and so I, I made this example very easy for you so it's a non-negative matrix with zeros on the diagonal so the zero weights on the diagonal define a uh, perfect uh, matching of weight 0 plus 0 plus 0 which makes 0 and this is uh, the result. So this is traditionally uh, computed by the Hungarian method and which is uh, the most in, in efficient method, method today to solve these kind of problems and uh, so this is also implemented in Polymeg. So Polymeg sometimes solves combinatorial optimizations problems efficiently. So okay th this is uh, Hungarian method computation. All right, so let's go back to to the main theme of our topic. And uh, ah, before I do this, so there is a there is a book project that I'm working on, Essentials of Tropical Combinatorics. I already told you, so there are some um, algebraic geometry involved in this topic, but this particular book is really meant to uh, address people working in optimization and trying to explain to them. Um, so why uh, this uh, point of view is, is is worth studying from an optimization perspective. All right, so uh, stay tuned. So there is a version of this book on my webpage, but uh, I will um, I intend to complete this book um, within the next few weeks. So it's 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 almost done. All right. So, but now uh, back to our main topic, so polytopes and linear programs. So that's what um, Polymeg uh, can, can do very nicely. Uh, and uh, one thing that it can do uh, better than other pieces of software is it can also compute over funny fields. So for instance, uh, let us do a computation over a field of rational functions. So that's, that's, a, that's a lot of fun. Uh, so, in general, so you can take any ordered field and so then there are polytopes defined, there are convex hull algorithms and there's linear programming. All of this makes sense and it does make sense uh, to study these things uh, um, in this form even if you are just interested in uh, traditional optimization questions. And I will scratch the surface uh, a, a little bit. Again, it's a comprehensive topic and one of the reasons why I like it so much is because it is related to tropical geometry uh, and in a way it is the bridge between classical optimization and uh, tropical geometry. All right, so but let's go back to an, a specific example. We switch back uh, to uh, the application Polytope where we came from initially and uh, this uh, looks like a mouthful but let's digest this very slowly. So uh, the upshot is, uh, so we define a Polytope and this polytope, uh, this is a standard Klee Minty cube. Okay, so this is a famous example from optimization showing that uh, a version of the simplex method, so simplex method with Bland's rule as the pivoting strategy, uh, is not a polynomial time method to solve linear programs because there's an ascending path uh, through all the vertices, and uh, this is what made this construction famous. Now, um, so you can. Um, so you can define the Clementi cube. So they depend on a parameter, which is uh, which needs to be small. But so we can make this parameter, um, um, an is you could say, a, a small infinitesimal. So some, so and I just call this t. And everything that I'm writing here uh, above this definition of the Clementi cube uh, is just technical stuff in order to to write it in this form. So uh, I'm computing um, with um, with rational functions, and so since I'm uh, interested in uh, in in optimization, I need to turn the field of rational functions in the one variable t. So that is the expressions in that field are quotients of polynomials in t. But I need to um, to to define an ordering in order to make it an ordered field. So how do I do this? Well, um, I, I order all the terms of my polynomial and uh, then uh, I sort them by ascending uh, a degree. And then the lowest order term is the one which is important to me. So this is what this minimum uh, means here. And then um, the degree, uh, so the, the coefficient uh, of the lowest order term has a sign and that's plus or minus and this defines the, the sign of the term. Uh, 
And then I extend this to fractions, like I do this for rational numbers, where I extend signs from integers to rational numbers uh, by taking differences of uh, uh, the um, numerator and the denominator, so their signs. Right, and so I, and I, can, uh, I can do this um, in order to define this Klementi cube, which depends on, the, on just uh, this, you could say, formal parameter t. So what you see here, so the it's a three-dimensional cube, and uh, so here are the vertices of this cube. Each coordinate is in these uh, round parentheses. So this is this notation for this uh, for for these fields that I can recognize them. Again, I have a leading uh, zero, uh, sorry, one column for homogenization. So this is just the origin, and this is then the point one uh, t t squared. And so, and then this is uh, another point, and this is another point. So sometimes a t occurs, sometimes a t doesn't occur. So the coefficients in general are um, uh, are fractions of these polynomials in t. Um, but here in this particular example, these are just polynomials in t. Okay, it's a little, it's not a difficult example in this case. And these are the eight vertices of the Klementi cube uh, for an infinitesimally small t. All right. So, and here you see the facets, so this is actually the example kind of works the other way around. So the, the definition gives you um, the, uh, is in terms of inequalities, and here you see, so the traditional, if you would replace uh, t by zero, you would get the standard unit cube. And, uh, but if t is sufficiently small, so if uh, these are rational numbers, so for instance t smaller than one half would do, so then this gives you a combinatorial cube which is distorted and has the named properties. All right, so, but so the important thing in polymake, so these objects are treated exactly the same as this uh, simple example of these uh, knapsack or fractional knapsack polytops that you saw at the very beginning. So, why is this useful? Well, now you can do something like this. You can compute the volume of this uh, Klementi cube uh, as a function uh, of this uh, indeterminate t. Right? So, and uh, so this is a this is one thing that you cannot do uh, with um, traditional uh, optimization software, for instance. And uh, so, if you now you can now evaluate this result. So this is an evaluate an evaluation of this volume uh, in, in in the rational numbers. So setting t equals to one over 100, so gives you a volume which is strictly smaller but um, close to close to one. And uh, you can also do such an evaluation. Uh, in the in the f in the floating point numbers, and then you get a uh, uh, a volume uh, in uh, a flo in floats. All right, and uh, so now I'm coming to the end of this presentation. Of course, there are many 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 things uh, that I couldn't show, so that was I'm just uh, scratching the surface here. Um, one thing that I would like to express, there is a number of help functions inside the system. For instance, um, there's help and you can ask for, f uh, for help on specific functions. You can also ask for apropos of certain words, then you get all the help topics that are th there. So you're combining apropos and help. Um, is m most efficient, and for instance, uh, here's a here's an uh, this function long and, and winding. This constructs an interesting class of uh, of uh, convex polytopes over this field of rational functions, which is again interesting from a combinatorial optimization uh, point of view, um, because. Um, as we showed in joint work with Xavier Alamijon and Pascal Benchimol and Stefan Gobert, uh, so that particular class of polytopes that you can provide uh, compute with this function um, has a very complicated uh, central path such that um, standard interior point methods uh, exhibit an, an exponential behavior on these uh, on these things. All right. So um, this was my short uh, run through Polymeg. I hope uh, you found it entertaining enough uh, to do all the experiments uh, uh, in you at home uh, with this notebook and further experiments. Um, you can ask questions in our forum. And so here we are at 
the CEO at work. We have this, uh, these sessions where you can also ask questions. And I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Bye for now.